just some boring boxes? Not at all. Hi and welcome to 3D Printing Geek. My name is Tom and in this video I will show you how you can create your own awesome lithophane either for your own pleasure or as a great personalized giveaway for someone else. This is the first part of a series of at least three during which I show you even more about the electronics, lighting and programming and probably an artificial intelligence solution to get even better results. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the following parts. Links to the websites, files and code are down in the description. But now let's get our hands on. A lithophane originally was a thin translucent porcelain with a molded or etched artwork. The artwork becomes only visible when the lithophane is lit up from the back of the slide. Because of the different thicknesses caused by etching or molding, the light passes more or less, creating a three-dimensional image in tones depending on the thickness. A good online lithophane maker is toolislitho.com, though still better. The basic idea is to take the image's color or brightness and turn that into an information for the lithophane thickness. Here we have the tool uh, I mentioned, tools, it's litho.com and uh, this is a page you see when you go to the URL. But uh, first I want to upload my image and I want my Albert Einstein image which I cropped already. Now that the image is uploaded we can go to the edit pane and change settings if we want. Um, on the right side we have a preview of the image. For instance we could change the blur uh, which might help uh, reduce very fine um, structures which may be harder to print or not come out as good as we would like it but I leave it that way. Then we go to the model pane and here I want to set the size of the inner size of my box where I want to put the little pane in and my box has an inner width of 90 millimeters and automatically uh, the aspect ratio is uh, changed for the height which is 70 millimeters approximately. Um, very important is the minimum thickness. Um, I leave it at 0 0.8 uh, which is a good value. If you make that too thick you have problems that the light won't pass through the thinnest layer and I want uh, a maximum thickness of 2.8 for my lithopane. <laughs> in the right you can see the preview, you can zoom it in with the scroll wheel of your mouse and you can uh, rotate with the left mouse button and as well panning with the right mouse button. Um, next what I change is uh, I don't want a frame around the lithopane, I want a border and I want my border only to be two millimeters because that's uh, the wall thickness of my box so that I can put the little pane face down onto the top of my box. That's all uh, what, what I need to change to get the first little pane. If you look close you see that the gray values are translated into the height information. And that's going to be exported as an STL when you click on the download button. It's uh, easy, you can choose either lithophane and attribute, uh, what is, uh, which is uh, the same as uh, lithophane only for this case. I think attribute will come into play when uh, you choose a color image or something like that. And once the download is completed you have an STL file. 
Now we have to load the safe lithophane into our slicer. In this case it's Cura and uh, lay it flat on the platform so that we can print it. And my settings to print the lithophane with uh, Isan PLA plus cold white are 0.1 mm layer height and a temperature of 220 degrees for the extruder and 50 degrees for the bed. I reduced the fan speed a little bit to reduce warping and I didn't use build plate ex uh, adhesion except of a skirt and the infill was set to 100% but you can experiment with infill um, I didn't see too much difference when using for example 15% infill To hold the lighting for the little frame, I created a small box in Fusion 360 and this is a bottom part with some small notches where the top part will fit in and the top part looks like this and you can see the border here and when we make a section analysis then you can see how all fits nicely into each other and the small gap here is uh, 0 0.8 millimeters the thickness of the border of melithophane so that I can put it into the smaller and it's held in place by the top frame. These are all the parts needed to build our little frame box. We have as a controller an ESP32 WS2812B RGB LED light strip and our printed lithophane and now it's easy to put all together. The lighting for the lithophane is built out of 42 WS 2812B RGB LEDs connected together and put into the border of the lower box part. I fed the wires through the hole so that I can connect my ESP32 to it. ESP32 gets connected uh, to the 5 volt line to the ground line and uh, the data line is connected to GPIO 12. Now we need a program to control the strips. Now let's go through a very easy program to get our lithophane box lit up very easily. Uh, here you see um, the Arduino IDE and uh, I will just go through the code. We need to include the adequate NeoPixel library to access the functions we need to, uh, for the WS 2812B RGB strip. Next I'm defining the pin I use on my ESP32, which is uh, GPIO 12, defined here. The number of pixels of my strip is 42, which I define here. Then we can initialize the strip with the NeoPixel class, giving it the number of pixels, the 
data pane and the type of the NeoPixel strip we have. It's uh, in my case Neo GRB and at 800 kilohertz. Now uh, the setup is very easy. With strip begin we initialize the strip. <coughs> Then I set the brightness to 40, which is uh, about one sixth of the maximum brightness, which is 255. Next, I iterate through all 42 pixels. So let's put our constant in here. and set the pixel color to white, giving it the index of the pixel starting with zero and then the values of R, G and B. And finally, um, we have to call strip show, which will push all the data to the strip at once and turn it on. In the main loop, I do absolutely nothing, just a short delay, but that would work without a delay as well, I guess. Then we need to upload the code, which is done by pushing the upload button. And yeah. After the upload is done, our script will lit up white. This is the box after the upload is done. Now let's put all together. We take our printed litter pane, turn it face down and put it on top of the box and then the frame which holds everything in place will be pushed in the box and finally connect the ESP to power so that the box gets lit up and here is our Albert Einstein little frame in the next episode I will show you interesting things how you can use the color feature of NeoPixel LEDs to create very nice effects with your little fame and even get a more sophisticated approach which makes your little fame look almost like a photograph. Uh, so if not done already, please subscribe so you don't miss these upcoming episodes. And if you like the video, give me a thumbs up and if you have questions or comments to the video, please put them down in the comment section. Thank you very much and see you next time. Bye.